At West Tennessee Bank, we work closely with local business owners. The best deals come fast. We work quickly and efficiently to get the money you need to take advantage of the best opportunities. West Tennessee Bank, a division of Decatur County Bank. We think you'll like us. Equal Housing Lender Member FDIC.
you like to say, sir? Oh, I sent each of you guys an email personally because I didn't know the appeal process or how this meeting was going to go. I thought it was going to be to present. But I need to talk about reasoning. And I'd like to be able to read it to all of everybody if that's all right. Absolutely. Sure. My name is Kelly Smith. I've been to Chester County High School for the last two years as an out of county student. I'll be a junior this fall. And this year, my application has been denied due to absences and a couple of incidents with my behavior. I was told that my only option was to appeal to the school board at the next meeting on July 27th. But since then, I've been unable to find out the exact appeal process, so I'm unsure if I'll be able to complete my case or just answer questions. My family and I have taken about it to decide that reaching out to each of you personally might be my best opportunity. <coughs> I attended school in Madison County until I was in the seventh grade. During October of that year, my parents decided that I was not receiving the type of education that they wanted me to have, so they pulled me from public school and I began homeschooling. I homeschooled through the eighth grade and did very well, but really missed school with my peers. My parents were adamant that I would not go back to school in Madison County Public School, and private school was just not within our budget. So in August, so we decided that we would see what Chester County had to offer. We made an appointment with Dr. Catlett, <coughs> Of the school. My parents and I were hooked immediately. My parents loved the environment and the educational potential. I was very interested in the automotive program. We made decisions to apply in June of 2015 and I was accepted and started my high school career at Chester County in the fall. Attending Chester County High School has been one of the best decisions my family and I have made regarding my education. I've done very well academically. I have all A's and B's and finished my sophomore year with a 3.91 GPA. I've also been involved in the automotive program while I've excelled excellently up under Mr. Carter's direction. I've competed in the Skills USA state, state competition and represented Chester County in the state finals for the last two years. In the spring of 2016, I actually won the state championship for MLR 1. This past spring, I placed fourth in the MLR 2 state finals and have truly enjoyed every minute of it. I was planning to compete in MLR 3 this year and MLR 4 my senior year. If allowed to do this, I would complete my ASC certification before graduating high school and would have immediate career opportunities. In the last two years, I've also experienced some personal situations in my life that have not helped me to always do my best with attendance and behavior. In December of 2015, my grandmother, who lives with us, became very ill and spent months in ICU, followed by several months in a nursing home and rehab facility. In late August 2016, I had some fairly extensive oral surgery that took me took me several days to recover from. Shortly after that, my best friend and I witnessed a horrible wreck on Highway 45. We were the first to stop and offer assistance. We what, what we witnessed and as we waited for and tried to help comfort the injured was very rough. The sleepless nights and the nightmares after were very hard to overcome. In January, I struggled with depression after me and my girlfriend broke up. During both these years, I was sick several times. All absences were excused except for four days when my mom mistakenly scheduled a vacation on the previous year's fall break. I understand that I've missed more days than I should and I let personal issues interfere with, interfere with school activities and cause me to make bad decisions regarding my behavior for the past year. For all that, I'm very sorry and I wish I could change it all. All I can do at this point Give you the opportunity to show you that I will do better. If I'm unable to attend Chester County this year, I will have to return homeschooling, where my participation in the automotive program will end and my educational opportunities will be limited. I'm asking you to please reconsider my application to attend Chester County High School. Every day as we walk the halls, we're reminded by Dr. Catlett, our teachers, and even our peers that guiding the principals are that our guiding principles are res trust, respect, and honor. I realize that not all of my decisions have reflected those principles, but after working through some personal issues that I've experienced have, and had time to reflect upon my personal accountability and all this, I can assure you that I'm prepared to finish the last two years at Chester County High School abiding by those principles. Sincerely, Kelly Smith. Thank you. Kelly, oh, something that I, I understand you know, you'd have some situations that came up and I guess what I'm saying is you understand that if this board does decide that you can come back to school then we really expect you to have great attendance and no disciplinary problems 
we want we want you to do what the captain says. We want you to you know, be that first grade student. Yes, sir. Any guys got any questions? Any comments? You know, like I say, we expect you to be a model student. If you have an <coughs> issue, talk to my teacher, <coughs> Dr. Captain. But uh, I mean, I have no problem with you coming back. But you know, like I said, we want you in scope. things that we just did tonight if we let you back in and if you don't live up being a model student at the 10th school you know we won't let you back in the second semester because it is a semester by semester yes, sir. but if you think you can do that you know, this kind of student that we expect i'll make a motion that we let you come back but we expect you to be a model student be here to scope. Yes, sir. Second motion. We have a motion second that Kelly Bob, I would like to ask him something. Oh, I was being said. I don't need discussion. Okay. Go ahead. I'll ask a question. Uh, <coughs> now, Brandon, did you write this letter? Yes, sir. Okay, so you are committed to change. Yes, sir.
course, Starla T is the one that allowed her to try out, but Starla was on the impression she was already enrolled when she learned that she had not yet been accepted because the window of opportunity to uh, accept or deny was still open. That's when she contacted the family to say, I'm going to put that on hold. So she assumed, Starla assumed that she was already enrolled. And, and it's, it's kind of like a, it's not, we, we can actually come and we toured the, the high school and um, you know, we, we as parents were thoroughly impressed. Uh, you know, the girls that have come to my house, I've been very impressed with uh, And uh, it just kind of snowballed. And of course, with the senior year, you got senior pictures and uh, a lot of extra stuff that uh, we had planned for. <coughs> Like to have an opportunity for them to meet us 
and we meet them and to kind of have an opportunity from for about one to three minutes <laughs> to share your position and uh, we might need to let Tommy go last. <laughs> you know how preachers are. But I would ask Dr. Belinda first to, now she did not realize other than just this recognition I'm giving tonight that that was the honor. I had mentioned that to the previous administrator, Chris Todd, before he had resigned. But since that time, I knew I was going to include that in our board celebration. So it's a great honor for our junior high to receive that recognition. And now with a new administrator who's chomping at the bit to do things radically better, guys, you need to look at our front of our campus. We've got some great new landscaping done. It looks wonderful. So, Dr. Belinda, you can go ahead and tell, tell us what your plans are. Which I just stand up and come and approach. <laughs> I don't you want to waste my minutes. You can stay right I'll there. Right here. <laughs> my name is Lynn Anderson. I'm delighted to be here. Thrilled to be at the junior high. Um, we have an alum who uh, came out and did all of our work for us in the front. Um, and been very blessed. Adam Sear came and did that and finished it out today. Um, I'm looking forward to leading the junior high. Our mantra is hashtag CCJHS Eagle Pride. Um, we are very proud to share the same words as the middle school, grit, gratitude, and growth. Uh, we look forward to being a bridge in between the middle school and the high school, and that's what our plan is, is to make sure that we excel in academics and make sure that our morale of our teachers are where they need to be, and then we make sure our kids are ready to go on and do great things at the high school. I appreciate y'all letting me be here tonight, and I look forward to working with you. left uh, Renee Thomas she's joined Eastchester uh, as their new assistant principal replacing summer I mean uh, excuse me spring with the coach I'm the fall your fall <laughs> um, I just wanted to introduce myself I'm Renee Thomas um, I have lived in Cheshire County all my life um, my husband is Amy Thomas I'm sure some of you may know him that's okay you know don't hold that against me daughters, uh, Brittany and Raina. Um, Brittany stays at home with us, and um, Raina is going to talk to in less than a month, so you know, pray with me for that. Um, but this uh, opportunity came at a good time for me. Um, not only will it give me more experience working in the administration, but it will also keep my mind off my baby being gone. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm looking forward to working with Kim. She's been very friendly and helpful so far this summer. Um, so just getting in there and getting to know everybody has been an experience so far and I look forward to helping her encourage the kids and get everything going. Staying smooth. <laughs> now we, uh, I'll let, uh, Tommy, do you want to go first or do you want to um, yield to your your other half, I'll say. <laughs> oh, well, I'll go ahead. And, okay. Uh, first, let me say uh, thank you guys. Thank you all for the opportunity to lead uh, the Chester County Middle School. I realize that decision came with a lot of uh, deliberation, consideration. And I thank God that you trusted me with uh, that responsibility. As stated earlier, our principals are going to be great gratitude and growth. We're going to try to make sure every student that leaves our campus leaves with those core values. They have the grit to persevere. They have the gratitude and they're not entitled, but they're thankful to their parents, their peers, and the teachers for what they're given every day. And that they can they continue to grow and have that growth mindset that they're always room to grow, they're always room to get better and do better and uh, reach protection. And so part of my uh, first decisions to make, uh, which proves that I might be on the right track, <laughs> uh, was the hiring of this very capable and brilliant uh, individual, uh, Dr. Melissa Judd, and I will sit down and allow her to speak 
to him, the board can be of any assistance. Don't let us know. Thank you. Anybody's got a comment? I'd, I'd also ask, I, I received, uh, well, a site visit by our own Southwest Tennessee Department of Ed Corps Director, Patrice Martin. She and another colleague came by to present to us um, our recognition as one of three school districts in West Tennessee, actually one of two in Southwest Tennessee, to be a part of the Tennessee Early Literacy Network. This is a a group of colleagues across the state. The, co the cohort one was one who they do practice innovative things and sharing those innovative practices with each other to grow all. Um, I look toward Randall and I give him all the credit for this because he's the one that took the initiative with his current title, working with elementary school level uh, teachers, principals, with a focus on literacy, he has done a lot of work through the elementary schools, building a great literacy program, and I have no doubt that our results for testing are going to deem that his work has been beneficial to all. But I also want to give him credit because he wrote an exceptional plan based on Patrice Martin's view that got it approved. So again, we are, uh, I asked Randall to be here tonight because it was his plan that got Chester County School recognized for this significant uh, cohort. So, do you have anything you want to share, Mr. Randall? Just another step of the many things that we're doing here in Chester County to try, with a great focus on these very young children, <clears throat> trying to keep them from getting behind to start with, and keep them and push them through so that they can excel when they get to the to the higher grades. And we've got uh, met with the teachers of all the grades that teach reading. Um, K through three this summer and worked on, on some things with them and I would like to report that I was really excited with their enthusiasm and, and the way that they wanted to uh, get in there and try some things that could be very beneficial to our students and I thank them for that. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Well, the next thing I want to talk about is Jeff Davis. Is we did a superintendent evaluation where we fill out forms. The highest total the superintendent can have is 900, and the total on our evaluation is 768. And what I will do with these is I will keep these and come out a day or two and look at it and I'm, I want this to be things that he can look at where we need improvement. Uh, none of us are perfect, and I know there's room for improvement with everyone. So I think you know, we can take this as a learning tool and where we can improve and make progress. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next thing on there is going to be with Dr. Catley. And y'all know Dr. Catley is always wanting something. <laughs> <laughs> so here he is. If you can stand up and tell us what we need to do now. Mr. Catlin, sir, thank you very much. The hardest working man in age. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to do the hard. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, uh, the last board meeting uh, mentioned uh, for you to consider IDs uh, as an addition to the dress code for the high school. Uh, since then, uh, we have, Coach Couples, Coach Barley, and myself have gone around to different businesses in the community and have secured their support to uh, allow our students to, when they come into their businesses with different percentages to uh, be off or free drink or so so the community is supporting them in that uh, the, the IDs would be similar to this this ID would belong to a senior um, blue is their color and it would have a picture with a blue background so if we see that student walking down the hall we know that they're a senior uh, if that student happened to be a dual enrollment senior uh, at Free Hartman, this would be a gold lanyard with FHU slash CCHS uh, on the lanyard so that we see somebody in the parking lot leaving and they got a blue lanyard on and they're back and forth. We know that they're out of their assigned area, you know, or they, if, or if they didn't check out. If it's a dual enrollment kid, we know we see that or Jackson State will be green, uh, UT Mark will be orange. So we'll be able to identify our students and it'll be a safety uh, part of the school. 
you know, just like the gentleman spoke, you know, uh, people are aware of the dress code. Uh, we have 925 students at the high school. Uh, we, we hope to know each and every one of them and things about them. And sometimes when a kid transfers in, uh, you know, take some time. Same way with somebody that want to do harm to our school, uh, students, they can get in a dress code uh, and come into school and, and try to, to harm somebody. Uh, now they can snatch, uh, snatch this off somebody and do whatever, but my point is, is people are sharp and we want to make sure, number one is safety for them. For. I believe we can encourage our students, Coach Couples and Coach Marley do a great job of making sure they follow in line and follow directions. And I think we can do it without, you know, make it mandatory for the dress code. Uh, but it would just be a little bit more to where when we saw them, we could say, you know, it's important to us. Um, and it's, it's, it's just like having a belt on, you'll have the, the landing on. Uh, freshmen will be, be gray uh, and red or, or gray and blue, I think it's the color. Uh, then uh, sophomores will be uh, a red color uh, lanyard and our juniors will be uh, white. So that way everybody's identified. And uh, like I said, we just like for you to consider adding it to the dress code. And uh, the other thing, and I, I, I called Miss King today and she gave me some great information I, I then called Miss Plum. We hope to uh, add a, a, a barcode to the back. That way when you go to the library, they can check their book out with just a, with the barcode. Um, and I spoke and said, oh, we'll do it at the cafeteria. And I got a little excited. She said, you need to slow down. And you don't know what to do with the government. But I did get to call Miss Plunk, and she said that she felt certain that when these kids in kindergarten get their uh, their ID, their number, that number stays within their entire career, that, that there should be a program that we can buy and just scan that as well. Because, you know, the first few, few days at high school, I know at other schools, it's difficult just for them to remember their number. Uh, so, again, it would be a benefit. It would be a tool. There's a lot of talk about it around. You know, kids go, oh, yeah, no, yeah. Um, but you'll notice, and, and uh, it'll be a pride thing. It'll be something that people wear around when they're not at school. Uh, Coach mentioned, and Coach Marley mentioned, that, you know, maybe it's a student, uh, a way to get into school, to, the students get in the different games. You know, as a ticket. Say, so we're going to let the freshmen in uh, football game free. Wear your ID, come in, you know. We'll know that uh, they come in with that ID color. You know, so we have to make it meaningful for them to, to be able to use other than just another way of, of uh, just demanding one more thing. And I think, again, that we could do it, uh, but, but we're really, we really would love your support on it uh, to, to uh, add it to the dress code. And I want to have you, the dress code completely probably what we would like to do is get some students involved and parents and stakeholders and maybe some middle school principals and junior high principals and all, maybe get a committee from junior high because the dress code needs to be looked at. Uh, we, we have issue with that uh, daily that people try to, you know, change, change, you know, real, real tight, tight pants. You know, we said before, you got pockets in those pants, you know, that was a thing that we could tell the difference between spanks or spandex or whatever you call those things. <laughs> so, but if they, had, if they had pockets in them, they were, they were good. But now, they're, they're so tight. They, they got smart, they found that, or they're sewing pockets on them or something. They got pockets on them now. I'd like to see you with a pair of Yeah, I don't think they're getting probably clothes the place now. But, you know, some, at some point in time, you know, maybe with the change in what, what students do, but include them, some of them, into the, into the conversation. I will agree completely with Dr. Kaplan about that revisit, particularly with the pants of the girls. We would like to revisit that at the junior high as well. Well, I make a motion that we add that to the dress code. No, second. Well, we have a motion to second. Any other discussion? I'm going to ask a question. Because I hadn't asked. So, so since it's being entertained, when they don't have it, kind of walk us through what's the plan. Because I know like with the belt, we used to keep belts in stock. So well, what's the plan? Our plan is, is we'll have, uh, we're buying around 350 uh, for each grade, you know, with lanyard, and we'll have an ID <coughs> that says, I, I didn't bring my, maybe it'll be my picture. <laughs> <laughs> that would cause them to really wear them. <laughs> but we're gonna offer them opportunities to correct it. And it's going to be a defined, if it's a defined issue, we'll treat it just like Dresco. You know, call parents, say, look, this is our, this is our policy. We've we corrected, because we don't want to keep them out of class. Right. You know, we just want them to be safe and to be 
uh, to be where they're supposed to be, for us to be able to demand. Now, some of them already said, can I wear it? Can I get another lanyard? Now, we're issuing them a lanyard. They're not paying for it. They're not paying for it. The, the, the company, um, Wes Offered, bought the, the system for us. So we'll have a camera, our new counselor. Uh, we'll start out with our freshmen probably uh, when they get in, in school, get, get involved with that. And he's got a camera that goes on top here. Click, save, take the picture, print it right there. So the system will take, you know, not just like that. So to answer your question, though, we'll have a, a, a layer in there for those who just lose it or forget it. And we'll, we'll give them another one. But for the defiant ones are the ones that we want to, to be able to say, understand, this is part of your dress code just like a belt. So what about, since it's not something they can pick up at Fred's or Dollar Store, uh, what if somebody just like my seventh grader literally says, I lost it? We'll give them another. So how many times are you going to go through that process? Have you thought through that yet? No, sir. I mean, until it gets to the point where we can, you know, we go to them and say, look, we give you five of these. You, know, uh, you need to buy the next one. And with that conversation with the parents, you know, I mean, we, we don't want to put another burden or strain. And, and it's something that they're they're giving us. You know, we have to buy the lanyards, of right. course, but they're, you know, I mean, they're, they're not what with it. 80 something cents or something. The goal too is to make it just like a college ID. So the more that we can make the card valuable to them, yeah. the more motivated they are to keep up with it. You check your, your books out for your research, you scan through your lunch line. And eventually, like Southside, to get in, you gotta have your ID to get into the building. That's how they, they do safety, they scan the card. Um, we give it a price that it's around $5,800 for a system to, and, and that's something that we're gonna have to look into because from the the students come into the gym entrance, you know, from the vocational school. So that door, we have a person that's dedicated in between periods to go lock the door back so that the building is secure. Um, it'd be great to be able to go, you know, come in. Uh, so that's the next level, but I, we're not there yet. Uh, we just want, the, the main thing is to be able to look out in the parking lot and there was such a traffic, and I'd get a call from Mr. Gills and say, you got too much traffic in the parking lot. They're out there smoking cigarettes. <laughs> 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 but, you know, I walk around out there and we get them. So if we look out in that parking lot, we see a, the three colors that are doing the wrong, then we can know that those people are, are to start to get the position that they need to be. And then we can just have that conversation. Another thing it does is somebody wants to be called by their name. And some teachers don't know the kids, and they can look here and say, Jeff, how, you doing okay, Jeff? Now they, they the first day of school. On the first day of school, they flip them over if it's, it's done. It's okay, Jeff, Jeff. And the more they see that, they'll recognize, so it'll be a tool to help them learn, you know, learn who's in here. Yeah. Really. Because uh, people want to be noticed. We're going to notice them. You know, we that help them. We have a motion to second. Any other discussion? All in favor of making the vendors and piety part of the dress code, say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. All right, Dr. Kelly, you're in there, buddy. Start taking pictures of your I'll give you whatever color y'all are. Get you one All right. The next thing on here is it was included in the package showing some of our new hires. Join you. Want to make any comments about that? Or I'm sure we have the very best available. Well, and this is the certified staff on the first page. I see uh, Jill and Sarah in the back with Randall uh, took a very um, uh, fine road to help support our new teachers with mentoring last week. Uh, it was a great group that I had an opportunity to meet. The first 24 uh, that's located on this page are exceptionally new, good new hires, uh, are committed to the task in front of them, and as, as uh, Mr. Tommy so eloquently put, you know, we all have room for growth. So I think these new uh, certified staff are going to appreciate the role that Sarah, Jill, Randall, others on our staff that are instructional support to be able to give them the, the guidance and leadership and then the reception on their end to realize that, hey, I've got room for growth and they're going to target areas for improvement and continue to strive to get better each and every day to do what's best for our kids. So. It's a, it is a good group. I, I thought our principals and our supervisors involved in the hiring process did an exceptional job. Right. The next thing is some updates. Is, uh, did we have a captain Scott meeting? Did y'all have yeah. one? Did we have any recommendations? <coughs> well, on the capital projects, basically we discussed where we're at in, in the process. Should uh, be ready to submit for bid in two to three weeks, I think is what it said, about three weeks. And then it'd be a 
about another three weeks to get the bids in before we have a bid opening. So we're talking about late September. We should know exactly where we're at as far as bid process and everything. And, uh, we did elect to pull the parking lot out of the bid process. We're going to do that on our own. Local bid. Behind the football field. Behind the city property. So I think Brett and somebody's going to work up the deal. We'll put that out for bid immediately. Is it about a week of the vacation and he's going to figure out how to break it out because we own the stacks and we can put it out to get <coughs> it ourselves without having to pay several hands on fees. And uh, then we discuss the single property. What used to be the metal house. We decided that what we need to do to get some benefit from the property. It's checked out, do minor repairs, make it work with the rentable, and then turn it over like the Casey properties, let them manage it. We pay them a fee to manage it. If it needs repair, they will contact Brett and we'll decide if we want to do it or if they want to do it, you know, whichever one that works best for us. And we discussed around six hundred dollars a month. that needs to be voted on. That's well, it came out of committee. Uh, the committee voted in favor of that decision. So the motion second and the vote unanimous out of the committee to go ahead and proceed with that. All right, so we have the motion second. We have any discussion. You need all kind of opinions. Yeah, I do. I hope you got some prices on fixing it up for them. No, that was totally to redo it. What's going to be done to it now? Probably not really much of anything.
in it early on. It was cost, not cost effective and liability. Well, if, if we did the repairs that they wanted on it, wouldn't they? Just more evidence of that, maybe it would be something to bring in that is, is there something that that the high school or some of other organizations could they use? Could they use the, the apps? They we always look for storage. <laughs> <laughs> it could be used for storage. Storage. I mean, look, they have another one they can get storage because it's got a our drama. Our drama took over our little outhouse that we we're going to do the greenhouse in. Mm -hmm. they, it's completely full of things that Mr. Kirk had. You know, the, the, just the stage was terrible at Williams. So we have a, a big need for storage. Okay. I don't know what this is. That first house use that because it's got a place you can back up there and load and unload it in. The, that one has the, the, the barn behind it. it yes. Is. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else from the capital committee? That's it. That's all of it. At this time, I'm going to ask if everyone. Uh,